look at the book of Ruth, chapter number one, the book of Ruth, chapter number one, verse number one. The Bible says, now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Mahon and Chilion. Aren't you glad that's not your name this morning? Ephrodites of Bethlehem, Judah, and they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab, the name of the one Orpah, thank God that's not your name, right? And the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelled there about 10 years. And Maon and Chilion also died, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Now I want you to look at this verse right here. This is where I'm going to be preaching from this morning. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law daughters that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people and giving them bread. I want you to listen to this here. The Bible says, Then she arose that she might return that the Lord had visited and uh, she had heard. Amen. I want us to look at that this morning and I think we'll get some help from it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day that you've given us, Lord, once again. I pray, God, that you bless now the reading of your word. Lord, I pray, God, you bless your people that have gathered in here today. Lord, we thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you've, if you've seen any this week uh, on our uh, social media, our Facebook page, our Instagram page, uh, we've, uh, we've kind of come up with a theme, and I wanted to start a series today on the subject, It's Time to Come Home. Amen. It's time to come home. And if we look here at the life of Naomi, amen, Ruth's mother, we see there that she, uh, I would say, was dealt a pretty, pretty rough hand. She goes away with her husband. There's a famine at first. She goes away with her husband and her two sons, Brother Greg, and then all of a sudden her husband dies, and then her sons marry, take two wives, and then all of a sudden out of nowhere they die. And so there's Naomi. Uh, here in this place that she's really, she's not from there. She don't really know much about it um, except for the little time that she's lived there. And now she's stuck with her two daughter-in-laws that have, uh, that, are, that, are, that are with her there because her husband has died and her two sons have died. And then uh, the Bible says, though, that, that she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return uh, from the country. And, that, and that's one of the things this morning that I uh, would like to hit on this morning. I hope uh, maybe if some folks aren't here, maybe they're listed online or whatever the case may be. Or maybe you're in here this morning and you've never, uh, you haven't been here in a while. This is your home church. Uh, maybe you, you used to come here as a child. You were faithful at one time. There was a time in your life uh, when you were here and you didn't miss a week. You didn't miss a Sunday. Uh, and then all of a sudden, listen, it happens. I understand uh, people go through circumstances. People go through trials just like Naomi did. She went through some death in her life and uh, she was away from home. Uh, but she got to the point where she realized that uh, that wasn't where she wanted to stay right? She got to the place where she realized um, that being in, uh, in this town, being in this place uh, of Bethlehem, Judah, that she did not want to stay there. She didn't want to stay in the condition that she was in. Y'all see where I'm going with this this morning. She got to the place where she realized that I don't want to be uh, in this condition of sadness. I don't want to be in this condition of guilt. I don't want to be in this condition, uh, this place where uh, all I'm reminded reminded of is death. All I'm reminded of are the things that are gone, right? And the Bible tells us that the old man's passed away. And when the old man's passed away, the all, behold, all things are become new. And what, we, what happens is that when we drift away from God, Brother Greg, we get back to that place of death. Amen. 
We get back to that place where we used to hang out, that place where we used to be, that place where we had no hope and no, no desires to want to be a better Christian, no desire, no, no, uh, no, no mindset of trying to serve the Lord. And we get back to that place and where Sunday morning service is just not as important to us as it used to be. Sunday night service, Wednesday night service, these things, these Bible studies, Sunday school and all that. Listen, it becomes, it just gets to a place where it's not as important where it used to be. Why? Because we're hanging around the dead things. We've all been there. I'm not sitting up here preaching it this morning like I'm perfect because I'm not. You ask these two right here, they'll tell you. There's been times in my life where I turned a corner. There's been times in my life where I went another direction, where I started going another way. But then the Bible says here that she, uh, give me that verse, it says uh, her, that her, uh, she arose with her daughters. Number one, if you're taking notes, she arose. What does that mean? What are you trying to say? Well, in order for you to get back anywhere, in order for you to be in another place, you have to recognize where you are. She recognized that there was a famine. She recognized that there was that, that she was lacking. She recognized that, that there was death. She recognized that uh, this life is not what I want. So what did she do? The Bible says that she arose. She got up. Let me ask you this this morning. Are you in a place where you need to arise? Are you in a place where you know you're not supposed to be? Are you in a place where you know that life is just not, uh, this is not what you wanted out of life. This is not where you wanted to be. This is not where you saw yourself uh, uh, a year ago, six years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Is this, is this where you saw yourself as far as spiritually speaking? When you were a, when you were a young teenager, a young person in, in a youth group here at Grace Baptist Church and you were serving the Lord and you were following God and you were living for him and you were going to youth rally and teen camp and you were going on uh, teen soul winning and you were doing all the things that you knew was right but then all of a sudden something happened and now it's gone. When you prayed those prayers on this altar or on that altar up there in Marion, North Carolina at that teen camp or maybe uh, in New Manor Baptist Church or wherever the case may be or whatever you were doing, is this where you saw yourself then? When you made those commitments, when you, when you prayed and said, God, I want to live for you and I want to serve you all of my life. I want to do the best that I can to serve you. Is this place where you, and I'm talking spiritually speaking, is this where you saw yourself? Let me ask you this. Will you arise? Or will you just stay? Or will you just stay? Or will you just keep sitting in that same spot? In that same place? Just hoping maybe it'll get better? Maybe things will turn around? Maybe things will pick up. I don't know. Maybe, maybe God will just, maybe God will just knock me off my chair and just make me. Well, He can. It took the death of her husband and her two sons for her to realize what she needed to do. Will you arise and get ready to come to the place? Man, where you know that there's food, that there's life, that there's a better life. Because what she, what she did, she started, she started doubting God. Right, the, the famine came, so she just started doubting God. Well, we got to get out of here. Y'all stay with me for just a minute this morning. See, what happened was her husband just kind of tucked tail and ran. Well, there's a famine. 
But leading up to that point, had God not, had God not taken care of the children of Israel up until that point? Provided? Led the way? But now all of a sudden, that's just Reese, y'all. She mad about something. But all, all of a sudden, a famine comes up. They, they just totally forget about everything God done up until that point. Is that, w would it be safe to say, and I don't know you this morning, okay? I, I've been here for four years. I don't know everybody's backstory. I don't know, how, so, some of y'all, I don't, I don't know, but would it be safe to say that maybe, maybe this morning, that if you've gotten away, do you think maybe it's because things weren't going exactly how you thought they would go here at Grace? Maybe you thought, maybe there, maybe there's a, maybe you thought there was a famine or, but do you ever think sometimes maybe it's, it's, it's us? It wasn't him. Amen. It wasn't, it wasn't your Sunday school teacher. It wasn't a, you ever think maybe sometimes it's it's us? Amen. Secondly, here we see that she arose because why? That she might return. I want to encourage you this morning to return to your blessing. Return to your blessing. Return back to what you know, where you know you left God. Because Naomi, she just decided, you know what? I ain't staying here. I know that's not the best proper English. But we in Georgia, I ain't staying here. She got up and she took off. And later on, later on in, in this, you'll, we'll see, we'll get to it next week. But later on, you'll see that she, she tells her daughters, y'all stay here, y'all go home, whatever y'all want to do, but I'm going back. I'm going back. I'm going back home. Y'all can follow me. You're more than welcome. You can follow me, and, and one of them does, and we'll get into that uh, later. But, but right now we see that Naomi, she arose. She made the decision that she might go back so that she could return to her blessings. Let me ask you this. Where? Where's the last place that you left God? When's the last time? If there's, listen, has there ever been a time in your life where you were closer to Him? Has there ever been a time in your life where you felt closer to the Lord, but now you just kind of feel like you're looking for something, you're drifting away, kind of drifting around? Let me just say it's, it's time to come home. You say, Preacher, are you asking me to be perfect? No. Are you are you saying that you want me to you are you saying that you want me to be here all the time and and every time the doors are open I, I need I'd like that but won't you just won't you just make the decision that okay I'm gonna I'm gonna try to start towards home. I'd like to see you all the time. But let's just first, let's arise and try to return. Make that decision. Make the effort to try to return. Thirdly, we see here, for she had heard, for she had heard, which means she was probably listening And let me just say this in case y'all hadn't heard. God's moving at grace. Let me just say in case y'all hadn't heard, y'all hadn't seen it anywhere. For the past, and, and this has nothing to do with me or anything else, but we've had, in the past three weeks, we've had three saved, three baptized. One young lady sitting back there right now, Miss Lily. Miss Jocelyn back there. 
saved and baptized right here, listen, through Grace Baptist Church. In case y'all hadn't heard, God's moving. And I wouldn't want to miss it. I'd want to be a part of it. That's just me. I want to be in on it. I don't like, I, when I played sports, when I played football, and I, I didn't want to sit on the sidelines. I didn't want to watch somebody else play. I didn't want to watch. I didn't want to want to watch the game go on. I wanted to play. Last night I was sitting on the couch watching the Bulldogs. Yeah, y'all done converted me. And I was sitting there and I was watching. I was watching them bust heads. And they were throwing them out of the game for it. I'm thinking, what in what in the world? Targeting? What is that? My coach, my coach told me to target. <laughs> Drop your head and lower the boom on somebody. I'm sorry, Brother Morris. Now let's have a moment of silence for the Auburn Tigers this morning. I'm going to go on this side. <laughs> he could whoop me. But I'm thinking, man, I, watching them games, I, I want to play. I want to put a helmet on again. I'd, I'd need oxygen and I'd have a heart attack, but I want to be in. I want to be in on it. I want to. I want to do something. It's funny watching Matt at work. Some of these boys, they can't. They can't work. But he'll tell you. Matt will say, "Just give me the pickaxe and go sit in the truck. Let me do it. Just let me do it. I want to be doing it." I want to be doing so. Listen, and if you're if you if you were here at some point, and you're looking around, you're seeing the good things going on. Don't sit here and think this morning that you can't come back and just get involved. You can. Ain't nobody gonna say nothing. Ain't nobody gonna judge you because if they do, let me know. Let him know. We got some men to take care of that junk. We listen. Ain't no brother Shannon Cox will take care of. Them. Somebody come in here saying, "Well, well, they 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 should have been here this whole time. They just now coming back." Cause no, we ain't gonna say that. Right. Ain't nobody gonna say that. No, sir. I promise you that. And if they do, they need to get their heart right. Somebody say amen. If you're sitting in here thinking that this morning, maybe you need to get on the altar. It don't matter where you've been. It don't matter to me how long you've been gone. I'm just glad you're back. I'm just glad to see some folks coming home. Amen? Yeah. Lastly, and I'm done. Well, what did she hear? The Lord had visited His people and giving them bread. And she knew, I need that right there. Whatever it is you stand in need of this morning, he's got it. Whatever that bread is that this represents that you need in your life, he's got the answer. You say, well, it's my kids. Well, he's got the answer. You say, is it, is it that easy? It is. Well, it's, it's my finances. You know, I just, I can't seem to get my bills paid and everything, every time I turn around, I, something breaks down, something tears up. Welcome to my life. But God's got exactly what we need. Truck tears up, he'll, he'll figure it out. Call Todd, he'll fix it. <laughs> I just got you a bunch of work, Brother Todd. Say, so I, I just, I, you know, it, it seems like every time I turn around, it, it seems like I'm just hitting a brick wall and hitting a brick wall and hitting a brick wall, and I, I can't figure it out. I can't, I can't, I'm tired. I'm just tired. How many of y'all, how, how many of y'all tired this morning? Come get what you need. You have to, first you have to arise. That you might return. It's going to be hard to get the bread in Bethlehem, Judah from Israel. By the time it gets there, it might be spoiled. 
It's going to be hard to get the bread. It's going to be hard to get what you need when you're over here living where reminded of your dead husband and your dead children and your dead this and looking around. Listen, it's going to be hard to get the blessing over there. Arise that you might return because so you can hear and see and be a part of the blessings that God's got for us. Amen. All right, where's my wife? She ran off. She got her dresses and left. <laughs> She'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to give an invitation. But I do want to encourage you this morning to take these words. Here she comes. She just got saved. We just had a girl get saved in the back. Amen. Amen. My wife just led somebody to the Lord in the foyer. Amen. Maybe y'all didn't hear me. There's a girl just got saved. Amen. Amen. Right now. Yes, sir. Yeah. Let's all stand this morning.